These are my shoes. These are the shoes that I walk in. So, as I get into this video, don't let me discredit anybody. Don't let me discredit any point of view. Just realize that I'm talking from my shoes, my point of view. Anyways, so what up YouTube, what up world? Here at the park during one of my video projects. Hopefully you'll watch it. Hopefully you'll subscribe and see it when it pops up. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because I don't wanna talk about that right now. But um, as I was working my way up here, driving, I saw this cool Lexus. Looked like it was brand new out the store. Let's just say it was like last year's model. So I probably didn't buy it used. But uh, he had both his exhaust, he had a dual exhaust. Both of those were swapped out and they had the loud pipe cat back exhaust on it. I'm sure it was an exhaust system. Uh, but he also had some nice wheels on it, wheels and tires. Had a little bit of camber going. So you can say he's kind of stanced. I'm not sure if it was on bags or not, it didn't appear to be. Uh, wasn't very springy or nothing, couldn't tell. But anyways, I'm just, in my mind, I, was, I, always, I always see people with nice cars. And when I say nice cars, uh, I'm talking about like modified cars, like they buy it out the store and then they customize it to their own. They don't just throw stickers on it, but they'll change the shocks, the springs, ECUs, exhaust, engine modifications, in intake, wheels, tires, things like that. Put it on bags, lift it, you know. Not just straight stock nice, like if you buy a Lamborghini, that's nice, but if you could buy a Honda Civic and make it look like it's from too fast too furious then you understand what i mean by nice anyways uh a lot of people i see driving those nice cars are usually asian it could just be the location i'm in like i said i don't want to discredit anybody but that's just what i see i don't see a lot of black people riding nice cars like that if a black person does get a nice car they like to go straight to lexus bmw or mercedes and then they just keep it clean because that's what a lot of black people have always considered nice as kids we probably saw that and wanted that you know the Cadillac stuff but anyways I never see my race driving nice cars and I wonder why all the time and sometimes you like go through your head and you just think like man is it me what is it about me and sometimes like me one thing that I try not to think but it always comes back and then I have to like slap myself in the face like get a hold of yourself it's not your fault none of that is is it because I'm black that's like a a misconception that a lot of people as well as myself you know use come across think about but that's not our fault our black is beautiful we should embrace being black because it's it's a role in the world that has been like, contagious you know like it's not like a virus like the flu you can get that from standing in an elevator but think about hip-hop a lot of people want to wear their hat backwards wear do-rags b-boy dance mix on the on the fucking ones and twos rap and it's 2016 everybody wants to say nigga it's like even when that term was used against us and we started using it to empower our own selves people just felt the need to have to use it on themselves but anyways man what i'm really trying to get at with the whole nice car aspect is i see a system that goes around that i don't see in my own community and i'm gonna say black this could be anybody's community, but as I said in the beginning of this video, these are my shoes. So, don't worry. I'm not worried about your shoes. These are mine that I'm worried about. My laces, my soul. But, um, there's a system. Let me start with what I see. I see generations of people growing up and living with their families until a certain age. Not that they're just scared to leave the nest, but there's been a system implemented where the grandparents have worked their asses off. The grandparents and their children have paid that house off and the next generation is people my age. So in the system that I see that I don't have, it seems like people grow up in one house has been paid off uh, and no matter how old they are when they work, it seems like they have money to do stuff and enjoy their life. Like the nice cars again. But the system I seem to see that I don't have for myself, maybe you feel the same way, is you grew up maybe living in an apartment you don't even know what it's like to live in a house unless you go over friends or family's house. But once you start working, you're hit with, you want to help pay the bills. You want to pay rent. This my house. This mine, mine, mine. There's no hours, you know? And then like, I'm 32 now. And I've been, I've had an entrepreneurial mind since like the 10th grade. I've said it in some of my raps, but I knew I wanted more. 
I knew what I wanted to do, and I knew what I should have been capable of doing. But like, I, let's get back. I, I digress a lot, if you haven't noticed in my videos and even in my music. <laughs> but uh, without having that system of like a house being paid off, we live in an apartment and, we, and we're just, we're, we're born to struggle. And it's not really the apartment living, it's just the system, okay? The system of family. That's what this whole video is about. System of family, okay? So without that system of family, it's like, and I'm gonna use myself as an example. When I was in high school, before, I think I started working at 15 at a work permit. Started at a YMCA. And I've worked enough years to where I'm able to get my disability while I'm sick and doing dialysis. Okay? They said that took 10 years of filing taxes. But I've been working since I was 15. And now that I'm on my own, which was pretty much once I moved back to Vegas from New Jersey, I was 19. I've been on my own. I bounced couch to couch. I slept in an abandoned house, so I was homeless. It's just crazy. And I'm with my girl for 10 years. We've been in apartments forever, just throwing away money for rent, you know? But it seems like if our families would have had a system like where we owned a house, people can grow up, decide if they want to go to college or stay home, they can go off to college. They'll get their financial aid, maybe some assistance from their family because the house is paid off, so that ain't even in the that ain't even a worry. It's like we just pay taxes on the land and we good or whatever we gotta do. But then as we move along, it's like if I didn't want to go to college, I could stay here, work, 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 save my money. And if I have an entrepreneurial mind like myself, like I do, then I would be, I would have had a little fun, of course. I could have went out at night to party. Could have had nice clothes, Jordans, fucking Stacey Adams, crocodile suits to go with a suit. But then I could have had savings and savings and savings, you know what I'm saying? And once I really want to leave the nest or want to do something while I was in the nest, I could have bloomed, you know? I could have started a business. I could have bought my business license. I could be renting a fucking uh, office space. I have the typewriters. I can staff. I could just get supplies. But no, I'm 32 right now, and I don't see that for myself because I've had to struggle so much. It's like without that system of family for me, I've been spending a lot of my life hustling and grinding just to get to the first step. And you know a lot of people... No matter what race you are, once you get somewhere and accomplish something, you like to celebrate. Whether it be a little or a lot, you just like to go out and party and reap the benefits of what you've sown, you know? So it's like, people like me, we hustle and grind, we hustle and grind, but it's like we never make it to step five because we, we get to step one and we're so damn tired from just regular life and throwing away money in an apartment for rent. To the point, man, it's like step two just never comes. It's like once we celebrate and kick back from hustling and grinding for part one, we realize we've made it no we've made it nowhere because we're still at, you know, point A. We go from point A to point B and never see point C because we always A to B, A to B. Once we get to B, we gotta go back to work for that month so we can pay them bills. I just figure. If I own something like a house, my daughter could grow up totally different. She could decide if she wants to go to college, she could stay home. She could decide if she wants to travel and we'll have some kind of family system, communication going on where I know what she's doing. She knows what I'm doing to the point like once she's in her 40s, half the stress that I've accumulated from just having to go through bullshit and point A to point B and C and C at a distance, she won't have to worry about that. It's like if she moves point A to point B, we're going to be at point B with her. You know what I'm saying? If she makes it to Q, we're going to be right there with her. Even if we're not all up in her business, even if we're not on her staff, we're going to be her support system no matter what. If she wants a nice car and we know that she's responsible enough, then we could be like a co-signer. But if I'm always worried about myself getting to point B from this point A, how far is she going to make it if she's worried about trying to help me? You know what I'm saying? I didn't bring her into this planet to worry about me. I worry about her because I brought her into this planet. She's an innocent child. She's sinless for now. So it's my responsibility to guide her, walk with her, teach her, show her, and then help her. If it's her choice if she wants to put me in a retirement home and keep me in her house, you know, when I'm older. It depends on how much she loves me and if she's got time and all that, all that, but that's all my work. That's the, that's for me to worry about. I worry about dialysis. You know what I'm saying? 
I worry about paying the rent, trying to be the first time home homeowner. So, a, syst a systematic family should always be set. It, it, it's not even a last name thing, man. It's just like a bloodline thing, man. Like, it's so easy for me to say that friends and family come from out of weird places. Like, I got brothers from other mothers, man. I'm the only child. My dad has some other kids, but just we never had that connection with siblings like that, you know. But my homeboy Orlando, that's like my brother. My homeboy Franz, that's like my brother. My homeboy Kenny was like my brother. We've just been apart so long, you know. That's a little different, but we still got that connection, man. We went through like two, three years together that most people won't do in a lifetime. We was just tight, you know what I'm saying? But as for my seed, my family structure, I'm working on it. If I make it to point B, I just want Penelope to start. That That's her point A. You know what I'm saying? I'm pushing her. I'm going to push her towards her, her dreams and her goals, but she's going to be able to have a good start. Like when you go to school, you don't, you go to different grades, you excel, you advance. So right now I'm in kindergarten pushing towards first grade in life, not school. I have some college under my belt. See that? Some college. Anyways, man, this is soup.tv. This is my daily thoughts. This is live and fresh. Nothing I've been planning, so it's exclusive, y'all. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. What kind of family do you live in? Do you have a structure? Or is everybody just worried about themselves? Soup.tv, man. Chunk Soup, David Wingard. I'm out. Catch me later. Soup.tv. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Uh.